Good morning, Clay students. Today, I am bringing you to class right here in this wonderful nature preserve. We are in the Finger Lakes Land Trust's Martin Preserve outside of Odessa on the banks of this beautiful little creek called Catlin Mills Creek. And I come here a lot to look at this really big tree that's my favorite oak tree around, but this summer I discovered something so fantastic and I wanna share it with you. I'm gonna turn my camera around. I want you to see that because the creek bed is so low this year, there's been a little bit of a drought, it's exposed this beautiful, huge grouping, like this huge mountainside of raw clay. So I thought, what better place to tell you about the properties of clay than right here along this creek bank? So right now, I'm sitting on a giant pile of clay, dipping my feet in. And one thing that you notice right away is that when I move my feet around, it really makes the clay come off into the creek water and looks a little bit gray. You're probably wondering, Ms. Kratzley, how can we tell the difference between mud and clay? And I'll tell you. First of all, it has to do with the porosity. The clay itself is made out of ground up rock that's come to the surface and also vegetable and animal matter that is decomposed and kind of melded together. And it has this special structure. It's actually like if we could look at the little tiny particles under a microscope, they would look like little tetrahedrons, little four sided pyramids, like those paper ones we made in class a few days ago. If you were with me then, many of you were. So the clay actually has what's called aluminum phyllosilicates, which are little teeny tiny fine particles. And because they're tetrahedrons, they can fit together really well and it allows the water to evenly distribute within the clay. So we end up with this pliable material that has some other properties too. So the first property of the clay we want to talk about is the plasticity. So with this clay, I can mold it and bend it. Now this is some clay that's right here from the clay bed. So it hasn't been kneaded a lot and I haven't added any other clay with it. And you can see that when I roll it into a little sphere, I've got to compact it a little bit first, what happens is it becomes a pliable piece of clay. Now this one on its own, see how when I bend it and it gets those cracks in the surface? That means that this piece of clay doesn't have a lot of plasticity. That means if you try to build with it, it will dry and it will crack and it might break. So you need to change the plasticity. You might need to add more water or we might need to blend this clay in with another clay. Sometimes different clay bodies have different properties. So when you're working with the clay, you'll feel it get a little bit too dry, crumbly, and that means it's losing its plasticity. And you will want to keep your clay moist. You'll want to knead it around and really blend those little tiny particles together really well. Another thing that clay has is what's called porosity. And porosity has to do with how much water it can soak up and how it dries. So with clay, we can form the clay into an object and that object when it becomes dry you can see how much drier it's a different color it becomes dry and hard but it shrinks all together the form shrinks together as one form it doesn't break apart maybe you've seen like a big mud puddle area somewhere before and when it dries it gets those big cracks in it that's because that mud doesn't have the porosity like the clay does so this clay we call we call <laughs> greenware. It's not greenware though. It is greenware because it's not fired, but it's not really soft and pliable. It's all dry. And at this state, the clay is really brittle and it could easily just like break. And all of you will probably have the experience this year of your clay breaking. Now, because we're working virtually and you will have to carry your stuff from home to school, it's always best to wrap it up in plastic so it holds on to some moisture and plasticity so that you can transport it safely to school because you don't want it to end up all broken. And if you're working with clay at home, your clay might get dry and you might think, ah, oh, I've got to toss it. Well, what I like to do is just put it right back in some water. We're gonna let it sit there for a while. And what will happen 
is that clay will start to reabsorb the moisture. It will get really, really mushy, and then we might have to let it dry or knead it on a surface to get it more workable again. The last property of clay I want to talk about is the ability for clay to vitrify. Vitrification is firing in a kiln. And so lots of people have fired their pottery in handmade kilns over the years. We'll talk about that. And sometimes even in the ground, in like ground built kilns. We have an electric kiln, so we're going up to about a temperature of 1950 degrees. That's kind of a low fire clay. Probably when you work in college, you'll work with stoneware and that fires up into the 2000s. But the ability to vitrify means that it gets so hard that it can no longer break. Like I can tap it on this rock and it's not breaking. Of course, if I smashed it, it really would. But it becomes hard and vitrified, which means stone-like. This one doesn't have any glaze, so if I put water in it, it would get moist on the outside. So we'll often glaze our projects as well, and that will keep them watertight. So those are the three properties of clay. Plasticity, how moist it is, how pliable, how movable and bendable, that's really important. We'll talk about plasticity all year long. Porosity, that's what makes it shrink and be able to hold its form without cracking. And the ability to vitrify. Now I'm gonna just pick up this chunk here and it's still, it's getting a little softer. I can crumble it. So if this happens to you at home, you'll be able to just soak your clay, get it moist again, and make it plastic. And I'm gonna bring in some of this clay and you kids can try it out and we'll see what color it fires. Thanks everybody.